Technic RC Pneumatic Backhoe. I see a lot of people talking about backhoes as being really interesting but challenging models, and decided it would be something fun to try myself. So, this one here is kind of interesting. It's controlled by a uh, Mold King 6.0 module up here for six power functions based functions, plus a Technic Hub back here for four powered up ones. So, based on that, we're running Pybricks on the Technic Hub so I can use a remote and then this controller for the Mold King unit. So that's 10 separate RC functions. But then I also wanted to include all the pneumatic functionality, which, and I wanted that to be RC as well, which, as anyone who's tried it will know, is pretty challenging to make all RC. So I've got an interesting way of doing that that I'll get into later, but we've got functions up there for the arm, outriggers, rotation, two points on the arm, bucket, claw, um, and some other stuff. Anyways, I'm yeah, excited to show this. So the centerpiece of this module is this, or the model, is this module here. So you can see we've got four pneumatic valves per side for a total of eight. And then these here, um, these are the LEGO released these screws tw in 2013 in light bluish gray with the block for them. I haven't actually acquired any of them yet, haven't been, well, yeah, haven't been convenient or cheap yet for them, so I just 3D printed some, but they work the same. Um, so basically, using this remote, by pressing the red buttons, I can use my Pybrix program to cycle through these four positions, and then by using these buttons, I can actually operate the valves using these worm gear drives from the shafts. So open it one way, then release the button, and it overcompensates a bit to make sure it's closed. And then I can use the bottom one as well, so I've got two functions able to be controlled at a time. And then if I have actually controlled a valve before moving, it will do this little reset cycle just to make sure that they're fairly straight. And then I can move freely to control any of these valves. So all three of those functions, the the slide and the two valves, they're all controlled by powered up large motors. Um, so that is the core of the pneumatic functionality. So before I get into too much more of that craziness, I'll just go over some of the more basic functions of the model. So we've got just opening doors here. It can be jammed back there, as you might on a real backhoe. Drive around with the doors at the back. Um, one function that I'm kind of happy with is I got, I believe it's called a pantograph windshield wiper setup going. We're just using these bar pieces and then robot claws connected by very short pieces of pneumatic hose and just controlled by this little lever at the back. So that's just something I saw on the real one and thought it would be fun to incorporate. So the model has four wheel steering using two power function servo motors, one on the front and one on the rear. And then we've got a manual switch in there to choose between normal and crab steering modes. Now since I actually got the model put together, the servo motor in the rear has stopped working the way it should, so it's only actually steering one direction. So we can go this way with four wheel steering, but if we go the other way it won't work. But four wheel steering there, I can flip the switch to the middle position and just do front wheel steering. Or I can move the switch to the front, and we got crab steering in the one direction that servo actually goes. The model has four wheel drive off one power function's large motor. And can do a little bit of off road ish stuff if the claw doesn't catch on the table here. Or even if it does, apparently. So one other function that we have is I actually thought it would be fun to include a four-speed gearbox. So it's a very compact one. You can slightly see back here using the new 2L rings from the Yamaha set. And I'm actually quite pleased with the design. Uh, you can't really see it here. I'll probably have some better pictures somewhere later. But it's very compact and it actually uses this 28 tooth gear that's driving the differential. So on the top half there are a couple 8 tooth gears connecting that into the transmission. So it's very compact. But anyways, so first gear, the gears are shifted through the same rope by holding down the green button and then hitting the red button. 
the day of an upshift. Second gear. Third gear. And fourth gear. I'll head back down. Third, second, first. Also, note that the gears aren't actually in order, so I believe it shifts first, third, second, fourth naturally, but because I'm using a programmed motor, it just goes to the one it needs to go to. Um, so I'll just try to show it driving in all those gears. So first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. Oop. I got a cylinder falling down here, giving it a little drain. But pretty happy in all gears, which I'm impressed with. One quick thing before I forget about it, we've got pendular front suspension. It's not a very complicated function, but helps the off-road ability a lot. Um, so anyways, there's a few more mechanical remote controlled functions. Not too many, but I'll probably get into those once I start showing the pneumatic functions. So first of all, We'll note that we have a little onboard compressor here using a power functions medium motor, but that's not a lot of air, and this thing has a lot of pneumatic cylinders. So rather than trying to cram in some really huge Lego compressor that would probably not be that big, I've got this here two liter bottle of pop. I fill up, up with my bike pump, and then I can hook it up to this port here on the side. Then we flip this valve here. And then we flip this valve here, and something pops, so I'll troubleshoot that. But that's how you hook up the backhoe. So now that we've got air hooked up, I can show you one kind of independent pneumatic function. So it doesn't actually use any of those eight valves. It uses a separate remote controlled one off of a power function's medium motor. And it just runs the differential lock, which are finally able to be made fairly compact thanks to these shorter driving rings. And in the rear. So, no locks. Alright, there we go. Now they got disengaged. So no locks. And now with locks, we got the bottom wheels turning as well. So that one is just controlled by this motor here. Running a little worm gear mechanism to flip this valve. Let's try some pneumatic functions. Lift the main arm, play it caught on the hood a little bit. On the bucket. And bring the arm down. Um, you can even try to lift it, but I don't think that really works. Alright, let's shift modes and try a couple other functions. Oop, we're not really set up to do that one at the moment. So that was the main part of the arm. So there we go with that one. And as you can see, we can reach well below here. Here are the outriggers. So we've now got the arm swivel run by two medium cylinders. Oops. So the next function here is actually a motorized one. So it's using a power functions medium motor through some gearing, then running some more of these 3D printed screw gears to slide the whole rear arm. Now it's got some issues. I think having all these pneumatic hoses in the area has really added to the resistance. But... That's the idea there. So now with the arm up in the air, I can show a couple more functions. Oh, I guess I showed that one already. Um, 
we've got the claw here for grabbing stuff against the bucket. Um, this one here is also a motorized one. We've got, I believe this is a function that case frames as an extender hoe. Got some cables, but some hoses bunching up here, so I'll just deal with that. We can extend this out while still controlling the bucket. See if I can remember which one the bucket is. Oh, I guessed it. That's not the one I wanted. Anyways, yeah, so that's the claw. I think I've gone over all the pneumatic functions now. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this model. I think the look turned out reasonably slick. Um, and I really liked the the basic pneumatic functionality of it, the having the gearbox for it, essentially, not really a gearbox, but controlling eight functions with three motors. I thought it was cool how I was able to take advantage of some of the powered up programmability for that. Um, also happy I was able to include some base, like some functions you'd more often find on a car, like a, the four speed transmission, and the four wheel steering and that. Um, before I forget one detail I like, the mud guards are made using that kind of flex axle type technique people sometimes use, but in my case I'm actually running pneumatic hoses through all five all five holes in these beams, which I thought was pretty cool how I could make body work out of it and solve my packaging problem to get a bunch of hoses to the back. Um, anyways. Yeah, it, it's not very reliable, which is annoying. I spent longer than I should have making this video trying to get things to work and dealing with leaks and valves not being reliable. So it's not a perfect system that way, but I think there's potential in it, and it was pretty fun to do something that's intensely pneumatic. So I don't look forward to routing hoses like that again.